Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll examine some of the key issues facing Congress as they finish up legislative work ahead of the midterm elections. Plus, a look at how research at Penn State University is helping producers put up higher quality hay. Now, from the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. With the midterm elections less than a month away, the NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. is working overtime to help resolve a handful of key policy issues facing Congress. Joining us now with an update is Allison Rivera, NCBA's Executive Director of Government Affairs. Allison, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. The Farm Bill is an important topic for all of agriculture. Can you tell us the latest? So the September 30th deadline uh, came and went. Uh, that was the, uh, the deadline for the last Farm Bill. Um, so we did not pass, Congress did not pass an extension of the current Farm Bill and we still have yet to pass a new Farm Bill that will take us into the next five years. So uh, we continue to uh, work with members of Congress, um, particularly our, our senators who are still in town in DC and we try to continue to remind them the need for funding for our FMD bank. Um, as well as just getting the bill done and across the finish line. I know livestock transportation continues to be a priority issue for NCBA. Where do we stand on resolving this issue? So we are uh, grateful uh, to the, the House and Senate that, again, livestock haulers are sitting in an ELD delay until December 7th. Uh, it was passed recently in a continuing resolution package that the president signed. Um, again, we're, we're, we're kicking the can down the road a little bit. We're pleased to have the delay until the 7th, but when the 7th hits, uh, we, Congress will have to uh, pass uh, the rest of the appropriations packages so that we can get another year delay until um, September 30th of 2019. At the end of the day, we're grateful to have the ELD delay, but we really need some flexibility on hours of service, and NCBA will continue to work on that issue as well. And what about the modernization of the Endangered Species Act? Any news on this important topic? So this is a once in a generation opportunity that we think we have working with the Western governors, ranchers, and some environmental uh, groups out there. We have legislation from Senator Barrasso. It hasn't been dropped yet, but um, we are pleased that those groups could come together and that we could have a dialogue and we have a really great chance of moving forward with getting some reform on Endangered Species Act, which is much needed and this has been a long time coming. So Allison, how important are the upcoming midterm elections to the beef industry? I think it's very important uh, what members come into Congress. Um, NCBA uh, has friends on both sides of the aisle. Anybody that wants to help and support ranchers, uh, we want to work with. Uh, so we have had members of Congress that are running uh, and those that are, are trying to, uh, to stay in their positions come into the office and, and give us a chance to share some of the concerns that we've just discussed uh, with them and kind of get their feedback. and let them know that things like the Farm Bill and transportation and ESA reform are important important issues and that uh, if they are have the opportunity and are elected to come into Congress, we really want to work with them to get some of those items fixed. I know I speak from everybody when I say that we appreciate all the hard work of NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. How can cattlemen and women help support your efforts? So again, uh, the elections are on November 6th. Uh, make sure you go out and vote. And while your members are home with you, uh, please remind them of the issues that we've discussed today that you've heard me mention. Remind them that we need a farm bill. We need certainty for our farmers and ranchers. Uh, we need to remember to continue the conversation on flexibility for our livestock haulers and hours of service. Uh, and we need to remind them about ESA reform. We need to remind them about your concerns as ranchers uh, and so please make sure that you go to town halls and you speak to them and that you get out there and vote and please visit our website at beefusa.org for any detailed information that you can share with them thanks allison for joining us we appreciate your insights thank you now you can help ncba fight for common sense federal policies and against efforts that threaten the future of our beef cattle industry by becoming a member of ncba you also receive the members-only Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from Washington, D.C. that gives you the latest information on the key policy initiatives that will impact your business.
It's easy to do. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you how an Alabama seed stock operation is working to deliver high-performing genetics to their customers. And later, we'll take you to an award-winning family ranch in Montana. Stay with us. We'll be right back. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. When it comes to the beef business, there's no room for gray area. The decisions being made in Washington affect the future of the beef industry, the livelihood of your fellow farmers and ranchers. Your National Cattlemen's Beef Association knows there's what benefits cattlemen and there's what doesn't. To us, it's as clear as black and white. Visit joinncba.org to learn more. I know from my own experience that growing a cattle operation takes a lot of hard work and a whole lot of support from your family. And achieving success in the seed stock business requires a focus on quality and a lifelong commitment to serving the needs of your customers. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz takes us to Alabama to meet a family that exemplifies all of these qualities. CK Cattle Company is a family operation several generations deep. Uh, We've evolved as we've gone along and grown our farm, added members, added land, and just grown the operation to keep up with the family to support us all. Like so many other cattle operations across the country, CK Cattle, located in South Central Alabama, started out small but with big dreams. We started with just a few pairs in 1978. I was operating a cattle operation uh, for my father-in-law. And uh, in 1989, I think we had probably 37 cows going back to those original four. And we were able to continue to multiply it. And it has gone by leaps and bounds since then. We're in an area where uh, there's a lot of open land. So, you know, growing, we, we've been blessed, but it's, we've been able to expand you know, through leasing land and purchasing land through the years. We're running just a little over 800 head of uh, mama cows right now, and we raise and develop a little over 200 bulls here annually, and we also raise, uh, breed, and develop a little better than 200 heifers here annually. Unlike most farmers in our area, there is no extra source of income. We, we work here on the farm and self-sustain it and make our living solely from the cattle. Good genetics run deep at CK Cattle, both in the cattle and the people. And the family's pride in the legacy they're building is clear. You know, you you got to take the challenges to get the rewards. And the, the rewards is we're raising our kids and our grandkids have been raised in a wonderful environment. And all that I do and I look at it, we're, we'll never be able to slow down. Me and Kate, I mean, we're turning around here, you know, we've gone from one family to two families to three families. There's no such thing as slowing down. You, you're on a fast track, but the, that challenge is worthwhile when you look at the reward of being able to raise your families in this type of environment. There's a great source of pride and pleasure that comes from working with family. It's tough at times, but you got to work through it. Um, and having kids coming up and having them want to go with you first thing in the morning. She's three years old, wanting to wear her blue jeans and go to work. I mean, it's uh, the amount of pride you get from bringing your daughter up to love the land and the cattle and I'm starting from an early age. I think the thing that makes you more proud than anything is the potential for you to leave the legacy to the next generation. We, we love what we do, we're passionate about it. I feel like we've got the best way of life that there is. And uh, it would mean more to me than just about anything if my children decided one day to come back and get involved in this operation. 
Using three breeds and the highest performing bulls from cows in their herd, CK Cattle produces animals that fit their deep south environment and their exceptional customer service fits their buyer's expectation. They raise good bulls and we've had good luck out of them. They work good in this part of the country and um, they raise good calves and they work good for us. We're trying to select some of those animals that work really well in our environment. We're at the furthermost point south in the fescue belt and so coupled with the heat and humidity that dirty fescue really works on these cattle and we want to raise cattle that work in our environment and that can handle that fescue as well as our heat and humidity. The cow herd is an Angus based cow herd. Angus is in everything. It's, it's our common neighbor. We've, I've treated the Angus as a maternal breed. That's been my concentration with, with the Angus cattle is, is from trying to make sure the cow herd works in our area and, and uh, that's been what attracted me to Angus. I feel like they're very adaptable to the south and uh, you know there's great carcass traits. I'm able to keep my Angus focus maternal because we do use two other breeds to cross with Angus. We use the Simital and the Kenning and we have Sim Angus and Key Angus. I have very deep roots in the Key Angus. The Key Angus has always been a staple here in this operation. Uh, goes back into the 70s. Uh, Mr. Chuck worked with his father-in-law, Ned Ellis, and uh, they were bringing over some of the first Key and Nina cattle. And those Key and Nina cattle were breeding back and uh, they were getting, you know, percentage bulls. The Key Angus bulls have been something that we've raised and developed here over the last 30 years and have been able to sell to our neighbors and commercial cattlemen and feeder calves tend to sell really well here in this area. The calves off their bulls are great, They're big calves good number one black calves, and they bring a premium at sale, so it's a good response. CK Cattle has found success by standing behind what they sell and keeping their customers' needs top of mind. This operation started as more of a larger scale commercial cattle operation, and you know, we haven't, we haven't forgotten that. I mean, that's still the roots of this operation. Although we're seed stock right now, and you know, we raise a lot of animals that will be sold as bulls and replacements, we still have that correlation and that tie to the commercial producer. We understand you know, where the importance lies in a lot of these operations and what works and what doesn't work. They're a great bunch of people and uh, they're, I mean, they're willing to work with you and do whatever, help you out any way in the world they can. They do, do such a good job with the bulls. Uh, standing behind them is one of the main things, that I, selling points that I tell to the, our customers, that if they have any trouble out of them, that they will come back and make it good. You know, the customer is the most important thing in our operation. We know that, and we try to have a great relationship with our customers. You know, the CK guarantee is pretty simple. I mean, we live by the golden rule. We want to treat you like you want to be treated. If you have a problem with your bull, we're going to back them. I truly feel that when they buy our bulls, they are buying a product that we have complete faith in, and we stand behind them. CK Genetics will be on display this fall at their upcoming production sale on October 26, but visitors are welcome any day of the year. We'll be offering a select set of registered Angus, uh, registered Key Angus, and registered Sim Angus females in our fall production sale. These will be some of our uh, top genetics. Uh, we're very proud and very excited to have uh, these animals coming online and being able to offer them. Well, we're, we're having our fourth sale coming up October 26, last Friday in October. We'll be selling 110 older two-year-old bulls. We will sell a select group of, of females, and then we will sell several groups of, of uh, commercial females. We're definitely open to folks coming in, and we encourage it. Uh, folks coming in before sale and taking a look at the bulls out in the pastures and getting a good feel for them. We'll, we'll always make time, and uh, we'll, we'll always be available for that. From the fescue belt of Alabama, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. As Bradfield mentioned, you can learn more about CK Cattle Company's fall sale offerings by going to their website at ckcattle.com. Still to come on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we'll visit an award-winning ranch in Montana that's improving the land for future generations. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at BeefUSA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. 
If you're looking for outstanding genetics that will work for you, then make plans now to be at the 2018 CK Cattle Headquarters Sale on October 26th in Hope Hall, Alabama. CK Cattle is a three-generation operation offering the best in Angus, Key Angus, and Sim Angus bulls and females, backed by a family that cares about their customers. The customer is the most important thing in our operation. You know, the CK guarantee is pretty simple. I mean, we live by the golden rule. We want to treat you like you want to be treated. If you have a problem with your bull, we're going to back them. Don't miss their 2018 sale offering more than 100 solid two-year-old bulls and 100 females including 30 tiger-striped F1 Brayford heifers. It all happens Friday, October 26th. Learn more at the website ckcattle.com. Welcome back. Every day, cattlemen and women care for their land and their animals because they're committed to leaving what they have in better shape for the next generation. We're highlighting the 2018 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head to Montana for a closer look at the winning operation in Region 5. Cows and calves graze along the banks of the Missouri River in South Central Montana. This is part of the Han Ranch, an operation with 550 cows that ranges across nearly 28,000 acres of private and public lands. This valley is where the Han family has been raising cattle for more than a century. I'm the third generation on the ranch. My sons are the fourth and the fifth generation is coming up with nieces and nephews. Our original ranch stead is underneath of Canyon Ferry Reservoir, which is just north of where we are now. And because of building that reservoir, my family had to relocate in the late 40s, early 50s to the location we are south of Townsend, but still on the Missouri River. Today, multiple family members work together on the Han Ranch. With fewer than 12 inches of rain each year, water is a precious resource. The Hans have installed more efficient irrigation systems on their crop and pasture lands, and they've added new stock water tanks, allowing them to fence their cattle out of riparian zones. So we're looking at ways to maintain water quality in those watersheds for just a healthy ecosystem, and also to do things like improve the stream bank health and kept cattle out of the riparian areas that are pretty sensitive and critical. One major project was the restoration of Deep Creek, a Missouri River tributary that crosses the Han Ranch. The family worked with private and public partners to install the Montana Ditch Siphon, rerouting irrigation water under instead of through the creek. That reduced sediment issues, improved water flow, and allowed fish to return. Deep Creek has been a, a real spot where we've have put a lot of work into it on our property in conjunction with the NRCS, the, the Fish, Wildlife and Parks, the DNRC. Deep Creek has gone from the status of being a non-functioning stream to one that is now fully functioning again. It has achieved that status that it was removed from the impaired, I guess, category you would have to call it. Immediately after that project was done, we started having fish move up from the Missouri River into Deep Creek here to start spawning. They're, they're so kind of unique and different from a lot of the landowners that we work with. This project, for example, resulted in them having to change their water right. They had to move and that is a risk that a lot of people don't want to take. And they're really willing to find solutions that work for both of you, even when there's some risk. At Han Ranch, conservation practices reach far beyond the creek beds. Their cattle range on private, state, and federal lands, which means grazing plans are designed not only to sustain the livestock, but also to balance the needs of wildlife. Early 70s, we started cross-fencing what at one time was about almost 6,000 acres in one pasture. We started cross-fencing, and I can't even tell you the miles of fence that have been put in, but there's now seven different pastures in that system. And so we try to go into a different pasture at a different season each year and try to rest a pasture, at least one pasture every year. I would say that there is more, more grass on their range units due to the rotational grazing systems that they're implementing. 
um, getting stock water out away from the creeks, away from the springs, so that those, those areas can be left for the wildlife with le less livestock impacts has been critical for the wildlife side of it. And then they're, they're leaving more grass every year with their rotation as the rotation changes from year to year. The Han family also manages their farmland in ways that benefit the land and the livestock. Growing wheat, barley, and hay crops helps extend the grazing season while allowing for longer rest periods on the range. In addition, reduced tillage and cover crop rotations have had a positive impact on soil health. We've converted to quite a bit of no-till farming where we will just uh, we'll graze the crop stubble in the fall or winter with cattle. We feel that the less we can disturb it, the more organic matter and moisture we can preserve and just get ourselves that further along in the game as far as that year and, and also for the overall soil health. The Hans own or manage land on both sides of a major state highway, so their cattle and their conservation practices are always in the public eye. We try to, to be an operation that when people go by, they, they see that you know, there's improvement. It's not something that's let slide, that they can look at it and go, yeah, I've heard of the Hahn Ranch, you know, I've, I've heard some good things, and that's the way we'd like to keep it. 92-year-old matriarch Dorothy Hahn knows that past generations would appreciate the hard work that's gone into preserving and protecting the land on Hahn Ranch. Well, they would think it's really going along good, and they're proud of it. They would be proud of their family. They wanted it to continue as a ranch, and uh, when they're taking care of the land and all, that's what they want them to do. Well, I think it's wonderful. It's just something, yeah, I want to do things better and, and leave the land in better condition than I found it and, and leave it better for the next generation who will hopefully take as good or better care of it than we have. To have those roots that go so deep is just a great feeling. And to be able to know that we've contributed to what's here and made it better is even better. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos from their operations, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award, visit environmentalstewardship.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll make a trip to Oklahoma to visit a family with a passion for the beef industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. Welcome back. Raising quality cattle requires taking the best possible care of your animals. Let's meet an Oklahoma family with a commitment to doing the job right in order to ensure their business is around for future generations. I'm John Shoemaker and we're at Boy City, Oklahoma. We operate with our daughter and son-in-law. 
Totally, we encompass about 70,000 acres, and we run about 1,300 cows here. Day-to-day -day working on a ranch is fun. I enjoy it. It's just to get out in the open air and get to see God's work. Cattle ranching is very important to us. We want to carry on the legacy of what we have known all of our life. As ranchers, we are caring people. We care about our cattle. We care about our land. And it is hard work, but it is fun. We really enjoy the lifestyle of it and producing a wholesome product. I feel very good about our cattle, uh, the health that we have on them and the performance that we have. I don't think we're at a point where we can be content that we don't need to make improvements. If you don't make improvements, you're going backwards. Here in the last generation, uh, we've started AI in our heifers. We continually do that every year and we're AI in some of our cows. My dad wouldn't have ever thought of that, or my granddad was not available to them to do that. My wife and I were married in 78. We moved here in 1981 and worked for my father-in-law and mother-in-law. Pretty much fell in love with the ranch and I just worked there as a hand for the first year. And then we started the feed store and I ran cattle on the side also. I, I was raised in Texas and I really love those folks down there, but uh, this is home to me now and I, I just couldn't ask for a better place to be. It's called no man's land, but uh, it's a little harsh at times, but until you've lived here, you don't understand the beauty of this land and what it can produce. We've had a feed store in Boy City now for 35 years, and we've got a store in Dalhart, Texas for 25. We started out with just me and my wife, and we wouldn't even have a hard man, and now we've got like 15 employees. And Over the years, we've grown. We just had not never done it all at once. Early March, uh, the Texas Panhandle Oklahoma Panhandle and western Kansas were affected by a wildfire, burned approximately a million acres, lost thousands of head of livestock. It was um, devastating to see the loss that some folks had and just the devastation that you wake up and there's nothing left. You know, there were loss of life that day, but the livestock and uh, the fencing Thousands and thousands of miles of fence burned, and $8,000 a mile, and it makes it pretty prohibitive. And so uh, that's what um, got us into thinking about what could we do as a uh, Purina dealer or as a person themselves in organizing a group effort on trying to help them. I mean, there's, there's so much need that we couldn't do it all. We stepped up and donated four loads of protein and mineral tubs to the producers in those states. We delivered some to Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. One Sunday, there were several people that came to us and said, we'd like to do something, we just don't know what to do. You know, John goes, you know, we're gonna sell all of our fencing supplies at cost. And I will take all the fencing supplies down there for free. I think we ended up sending four semi-loads of material that direction. I was just floored with the amount of help that people would do. I had uh, a load of tubs that I was delivering to a ranch and the, the ranch hand called me and said, I heard you're taking donations. He said, when you come up here with that load of tubs, I got a check I want to give you. I thought, you know, he might have a hundred bucks or 200 bucks or something. He gave me a check for $2,500. Now that's more than a month's salary. Fortunately, everybody was sending in donations and we collected over $65,000 at our store in Boy City to uh, send to wildfire victims. We need to be taking care of our own folks if we can, you know, and helping those folks and helping fellow ranchers in other parts of the country too. Starting out with my great grandparents in the ranching business and then my grandparents and my parents, it brings joy to my heart that my girls and my granddaughters are wanting to get back in the ranching business. 
it just brings a special place in your heart to see them out enjoying the work that you enjoy yourself. And you didn't have to tell them that this is what you're going to do. They tell you this is what we want to do. <laughs> you know, we worked several other big ranches and we decided that we wanted to move back home and be able to work with our family. I love getting the girls involved on the ranch and um, you know, I'll always let them choose what they want to do in life, but at the same time I also tell them like, hey, you got to learn this because we need your help. My dad had all girls, my grandpa had all girls, and so just because we were girls doesn't mean that we didn't help on the ranch, like we were, we worked like the guys. It's cool whenever the men are like, man, you're pretty tough, and getting in there and just helping. Rim and Stormy have a lot of good ideas and younger blood gets in there and uh, it just kind of lifts your spirits and you want to do more. We've been at this for a long time and I hope that my grandparents would say, hey, you're doing a good job. It just makes me feel so proud. My girls, I hope they get to carry on the legacy and keep going on with what I got to do. I'm excited for the future on the ranch. Just seeing our girls continue um, what we've taught them, what their grandparents have taught them, what my grandparents have taught us, and continuing that tradition and also, you know, progressing and continuing to feed America with good quality beef. They can enjoy this life and be a very integral part of producing food and beef for the next generation of Americans. Proper nutrition can make the difference in the health of a herd and the profitability of an operation. The folks at Purina offer a wide range of products designed to help your cattle achieve greatness at every stage of life. You can see for yourself at the website purinamills.com slash cattle. Still ahead on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you how New Holland is supporting cutting edge research to help producers put up higher quality hay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Let's go to New Orleans. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2019. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention for the first time ever in New Orleans, a city filled with great fun, great food, and an amazing history. You can't miss it, so make plans now to go to the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in New Orleans, January 30th through February 1st. Visit ncba.org for more. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional, and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. Recently on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we showed you how New Holland is working with Penn State University to study the impact of bale density and the factors that influence it. Brian Baxter takes us to Pennsylvania for an update on this valuable research and how it could improve the quality and value of your hay and forage. If you're looking for a hay bale to feed your cattle, this is not the bale you want. This one is spoiled and full of mold. But researchers at Penn State University working with New Holland did this intentionally to measure how bale density affects hay spoilage and the loss of feed value. We've done study after study after study in field tests that's showing that density does extend the life, storage life of all the crops that you bale. But what we're not is we're not nutritionists. We don't get into the nutritional side of things. So we partnered with Penn State to take a much closer look at the nutritional side of things. We want to take a peek at that and see how density affects that. So essentially, the denser the bale we found has that longer bunk life. So the longer we have to feed out that bale, 
um, and the lower end on the density ratings that we did, um, we found that um, those bales would spoil anywhere between 60 and 65 hours. But on the more dense bales, we actually saw an increase of 20 to 24 hours of bunk life. There's definitely a relationship between the density of the bale uh, and the temperature that it gets to, and the temperature affects how much protein is available, the availability of nutrients in that bale. As temperature goes up to a certain point, up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit in that ballpark, we start to see the availability of some of those nutrients start to drop off. So in a, uh, you, you get a hot bale, run an analysis on it, and the crude protein comes back at 20%, there may be only 15% of that crude protein is really available because it's been bound up and not available to the animal. So another thing to think about is you're running analysis, quality analysis on these samples be sure to ask for a available crude protein measurement too, not just the crude protein, because that's sort of a, a number that doesn't really tell you much when it finally comes to how the animal's gonna perform on it. To conduct the study, the Penn State team used round balers from a variety of manufacturers. They cut and baled hay at various speeds and set bale density at different pressures to see how feed value and storage life were affected. New Holland's Kurt Hoffman walked us through some of the differences in the resulting bales. So today we're going to take a look at some baleage bales. It's kind of like judging cattle at the local fair. You know, you got some good ones, you got some mediocre ones, and then you got some really good ones. So on this end, we got some of those lower end cattle that just aren't going to quite make the cut today. A little weak here, a little weak there, but as we go down the line, you're going to see that the quality of bale gets a lot better as the density goes up in the bale to give you a better quality silage bale. So one of the things we did is we took a look at bales and bale shape based on the density that the baler was set at. So bale one is made at 1,000 PSI. Bale two, 1,200, three, 1,400, so on and so forth. But what I want people to take a look at here is, is generally, this bale's not a bad looking bale. It's a little bale, barrel shaped in the top. But what I want people to take a look at is, is look at these voids. We see a lot of voids if I put my finger on that plastic, that plastic is soft right in there. So I know that when I cut the plastic off and I open it up, you're going to find a little bit of mold in this area because we have a pocket of air um, that happened here. So that's 1,000 PSI. As we move up to 1,200, still see some pockets a little bit, but the bales will smooth out gradually as we keep moving up. So here we go to 1,400, 1,600. So if you look at this bale, especially you see a little bit here, a little here, a little here, a little bit of divoting back there. But now you start to see this bale starting to really get smooth, starting to see a nicer edge. That's really what I'm shooting for as a goal as a silage producer. If I want to pay particular attention to my bales and I'm with the best quality bales, we're starting to get there. Now we move to 1800 PSI, <clears throat> and this was a nice particular sweet spot, 1800 to 2000 but the divots are a lot smaller. My bales are a lot flatter. Notice this bale sits flat and the ground is basically the same slope here. That bale's starting to get soft on me. That bale's a little soft and, and uh, not level also. And then if we move up to 2000 PSI, I just want everybody to take a look at how smooth the edges are, nice and flat across the top. It's a nice bale. You, you pound on it with your fist. It's good and firm. I would expect that when I take the plastic off of this bale and feed this bale, I'm not going to find hardly any mold or very, very little if I'm going to see it. So just to give you a visual impact of the goal of what you want to see, this is a good marshmallow, if you will, for a baleage bale. Of course, the main reason for making hay is to deliver the very best feed value to the animals consuming it. Since that's the purpose, the Penn State researchers say it pays to pay attention to bale density. The denser the bale, the better, whether you're making um, you know, wet hay or dry hay. And all of those has to do with um, hay storage. Um, but it also has to do with some of the nutritional and quality aspects of the forage as well. A bale density is really important because uh, not only getting more in a bale, so you have to make less bales, but it really affects if you're going to make silage, how well that silage ferments. Oxygen in the bale uh, slows down the fermentation process, extends it, makes a bale, lets the bale get hotter. The tighter you can make that bale and the tighter you can wrap that bale, squeezes more air out of it so that it'll go anaerobic quicker. 
and start fermenting faster so the temperature doesn't rise. And 120 degrees, 125 is a point when the, the protein and carbon start to fuse together in the hay and makes the protein unavailable to the animals. So our crude protein level could stay the same in those bales, but the animals, it just blows through the animals. It's not utilizable at all by the animals. So the real available crude protein drops as the temperature goes up like that. Beyond the value of the nutrition for the animals, increased bale density or more crop in each bale also offers significant cost savings for the hay producer. So does making a dense bale uh, equal money in my back pocket? You bet, in a lot of different ways. You know, like we've talked, it cuts down on storage losses. That's the big one. But it also increases the quality of feed that you're feeding. So there's less mycotoxins, less molds in that feed if we get proper fermentation. Yeah, it means big money at the end of the year. Um, at the end of five years, like we were talking about earlier, you can pay for a four by five round baler with the savings in just net wrap and film wrap, let alone the other things, the time and the fuel. We didn't even give any consideration to that kind of stuff. When we know from the Penn State bale density study that our sweet spot is that eight to nine mile an hour. That's where we make the densest bale. Um, over the competition. So bottom line, run your baler at wherever it will perform the best to make the densest bale. And then the excellent, or the other thing that you can do that helps is turn the density up. You want your density always set to max if you're doing dry crops, if you're doing silage crops. My advice to cattle producers is just to make as dense a bale as possible and also to know your baler. In the past, we have thought that possibly the slower you go, the more dense the bale you make. But some of our research has shown that that, in fact, may not be the case. So it's important to know the type of baler that you have and to know what that sweet spot is to make the most dense bale. Because that is the bottom line, is make as dense a bale as possible. That way you have that increased or prolonged bunk life in order to feed your cattle um, you know, that optimum quality forage. Additional research results and recommendations from the Penn State work will be shared with producers across the country in the months ahead. At Penn State, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Bale density is just one factor that can impact the feed value of the hay and forage you provide for your cattle. Another is the equipment you use. For more information on hay tools from New Holland, visit the website New Holland. Dot com. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, break, bail, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more. New Holland, equipped for a new world. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. IMI Global is here to help you do just that. Pardon me if you're looking for Baxter Black, you know, the funny cowboy. He's right here with a special offer. Six hour long DVDs filled with live shows, Emmy winning comedy, all Baxter at his best. And the price is right, 25 bucks plus shipping. 800-654-2550 or online at baxterblack.com. As Farmer Bill from Alabama said, he's the only famous person I know who is just one of us. Howdy. I withdrew my plastic sleeved arm from the cow and looked back down the alley. It was empty, but I could see into the big crowding pen there where a large bull stood placidly. My teenage son and neighbor's teenage daughter stood behind him trying to push him toward the chute. I had a chill. Get up on the fence, I yelled. Don't ever get down in there with a bull. You can't trust them. 
Well, they grumbled and explained that he was tame, that you could scratch his head. It doesn't matter, I said. Never trust a bull. A bull can do whatever it wants. Mr. T had a small farm in central Indiana and a set of beef cows. And in with the cows, he ran a very large reddish bull called Red, of course. One day, Red decided to visit the neighbors. He merely pushed the wire fence over. The ground was wet and the posts gave like straws in the wind. With the lure of a bucket of grain and some cajoling, Red was coaxed back to his own side and the fence was repaired. A call from the neighbor the next morning reported that Red had returned to feast on the wrong side again. Mr. T tried the grain bucket routine to no avail. Whips and shouting did not work. And finally, Mr. T went home and came back in his half-ton pickup. He drove into the field and up behind Red. With the neighbor's help, he placed his front bumper up against Red's massive behind. He dropped down into L on the automatic tranny and pushed. Red budged and then rose to his full height. Great, thought Mr. T. I'll just hurt him back through the hole in the fence. He looked over his shoulder to get the correct direction. Then he began to move backwards. Red had his head down and was pushing. Mr. T put it back in forward and the mud flew from the hind wheels as Red continued to push him backwards. Something had to give, and it did. The grill, the hood, and the radiator. Three weeks later, Red finally walked home on his own when he was good and ready. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. I know many people use the phrase stubborn as a mule, but bulls can be just as difficult. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out on YouTube. We're back right after this. The iconic Farmall tractor revolutionized farming as the first truly all-purpose tractor. Since 1923, millions of Farmall tractors have been sold. Today's Farmall series tractors from Case IH build on the tractor's legacy as a versatile workhorse. Farmall tractors are durable and easy to use. Regardless of your tractor needs, with engine horsepower ranges from 30 to 140 and value, deluxe, and premium models available, there's a farm all to meet your needs and budget. A comfortable and spacious operating area makes working long hours more productive and enjoyable. Once you drive a Case IH farm all, you'll understand why customers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. With 0% financing available now, being a part of the Farmall family has never been more affordable. Talk to your local Case IH dealer or visit caseih.com forward slash minute. Hey folks, I'm Bobby Hebert of Cajun Cannons from the New Orleans Saints. Come on down to the Big Easy for the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show. It'll be the biggest and the best you've ever seen. There'll be great food, fun, and outstanding music from country music duo Big and Rich. So join me and let's go to New Orleans January the 30th to February the 1st. Find out more at beefusa.org. Welcome back. The 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in New Orleans, Louisiana will be here before you know it. It's a unique and fun environment for cattle industry members to come together to network, create policy, and have a little fun. We asked several producers to share their thoughts on the trade show and why it's a highlight of the event. So the value of NCBA's trade show, it's an opportunity to have acres of uh, products and um, services under one roof where you can just walk the aisles and you can talk to um, I guess any supplier of any product that's relevant to the beef industry. The trade show is un unbelievable. There's, I think it's the biggest one I've ever been to and it seems like it just gets bigger and better every year. Trade show is, is great because you, you get uh, to see all the new technologies that are out there, all the new 
uh, concepts that are out there for ranchers to take back home to the ranches. Yeah, so I like to walk through the trade show at NCBA convention because I learn new things. I like to look and see what uh, new technologies are out there and spend time specifically with different companies that I'm interested in purchasing from in the, in the future or maybe I've been purchasing from uh, through the different years. Yeah, the trade show is one of those things that you go through there and wish you had a bigger checkbook. Um, but it's the best place in terms of deals, but you see so many uh, products that you sometimes haven't even thought about. And they may not be exactly what you need, but they perk that interest, or they might be. And if you're really astute and it's in the right part of the country, you wait to the last day and make a deal with the vendors. Now, actually, it's a, it's a great opportunity, and I think one of those places where you see new technology that you probably wouldn't have seen simply at your local county or state fair. Convention registration is now open, so don't wait. Sign up today. The 2019 convention runs from January 30th through February 1st. Go to ncba.org for all the details on how to register for this can't-miss event. It's time once again for Legacy Photos, as we share some great shots submitted by our viewers from all across the U.S. Let's take a look. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.